Hi hey everybody, welcome back to the painting channel. Today is something a little different. I want to show you how to set up a watercolor palette. So let's roll that intro. Let's see how we get on. Hi everybody, and as I said at the top, it is all about how I set up a watercolor palette. Now, it's not as easy as you first think. There are so many different colors, so many different types of palettes. Where do you start? So what I wanted to show you is how the rationale behind some of my thinking has been in the last year or so, and what I've sort of come right the way round to thinking and doing. So I wanted to share that with you in this little video today. So I do hope you get something from it. And if you do, then please uh, put your comments down underneath. Let me know what sort of palettes that you've got, what you enjoy, what colors you use, all that sort of thing. I love to read about it and love to know a little bit more about different people's ideas of what they want to put in their palettes. So with that all said and done, if you are enjoying this content and you enjoy my other videos and you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing to the channel. It really does help grow the audience and grows the channel. It allows more people uh, around the world to watch the content that you two are enjoying. So that would be fantastic if you don't mind doing that. Also click the bell icon and add comments. You know I love to read them and I'll always answer them. So with that all said and done, let's get on and let's see what happens with how I plan my watercolor palette. Okay, so you can see here that I've got several palettes just piled up on top of each other. I did that just to show you some of the thinking that I've had in the past. Now, let me first and foremost, let's just edit this down a little bit. So there we go. This is an old palette that I had a long, long time ago. And it's there as a spare. If I ever run out of a color, I've always got these handy. But that rarely, you can see the amount of dust on there. It doesn't get used. So we can take that out of the equation. This, however, is something that's very, very different. This is a hand-built brass box from Craig Young. Now, having said that, I, I treated myself to this a long time ago. And I really do enjoy this. This is my plein air kit. This is part of what I do when I go outside and paint from life. And you can see how dirty it does get. But in here, it is compartmented for 16 colors. Now you can see how greedy I have become over the time uh, by introducing a little piece of plastic in there to give me another slot. And then that, even that was not good enough. I then uh, put some glue down and added these other colors. Now, in truth, you don't really need that many colors. Uh, I have the opportunity to buy colors as we all do. And over the time I've bought too many. I really have bought too many. And the more you buy, the more you've got to put out, you've got to find a place for them and it can become quite confusing as the next box will also demonstrate to you. So this should have 16 slots and I have got 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25 slots in there. And that's just way too much. So this really does need editing down, but I keep this box purely for plain air. I was doing my uh, videos in here with using this, but so I then looked at all the different colors that I had at my disposal and I felt, you know, I want to get those out. I want to use those. Why have them if I'm not using them? Good question. But it, I bought this. This has got, I think, 36 or more slots in it for putting all those different colors. And I put them all out. And over the last few weeks, I've realized that many of the colors that I've got are almost very, very sim similar to each other different manufacturers, but even some from the same manufacturers are very, very close. So do I actually need all of them? Well, the answer to that is no, of course you don't need all of them. And uh, I'm talking from two points of view here. I'm talking to you from the point of view, if you're just starting out and not knowing what colors or what equipment to buy. And I'm also talking to you from somebody like me, who's got so many colors that you just don't know what to do with them all. And here I put all of the different colors that I've bought over the years 
uh, into this box. There are some Winsor & Newton, mainly uh, they are Schmincke and uh, Daniel Smith, but they're all there. And I've noticed, as I was saying, that over the last few weeks of using this new tin palette, it's not, it's based on some of the Holbein type ones and others that are out there, but this is a, a cheaper tin one. It does the job. It's, own, it's half the price of a Holbein, but it will see me out and do what I want to do with it. Now, the thing is that um, I've noticed I just don't use all these colors. What's the point of having them if I don't use them? And so I, it set me to thinking back to my Craig Young box and editing back down some of these colors, which are superfluous and just concentrating on the colors that I actually really need. So what I then did, I keep wasting my money. <laughs> I bought a brand new box. There we go. Now my intention during this video is just to show you how to fill that box up uh, but make better decisions about the colors that you need to buy if you haven't started or those that you already have if you've got too many to choose from. And so this has got 20 slots in it and that will be it. I'm going to use 20 uh, colors in my future videos and I will put a concise list of that down in all the descriptions in the future. I will keep my Cray Young box purely for my um, outside painting, but I will be editing that down too. I really don't need all that color sitting in there and I'm also losing mixing space. So that's also a job to be done, but not in this video. And the thing is that I've already chosen the colors that I will put into those 20 slots. So let's just look at this range of color. These are the 20 colors that I've selected for my future palette. They're based on the colors that I already have, of course, and they are ones that I many have used in all of these other boxes in the past. Okay, so the first one, I'm just checking that I've got them all in the order I really want them. Uh, the neutral tint is a little bit sort of a hybrid between the browns and the blues so I'm going to put that about there and my indigos my French ultramarine and my cobalt blue now I don't put ultramarine violet next to ultramarine blue when they're in the pans they do look quite similar all right so let's get started and let's start off with our sepia and I'm going to start that down here and I'm going to put a nice squeeze in. This is so much fun. I do like this part of setting up a new palette. It is really a delight just to squeeze out all those new colors into a very fresh color palette. But there you go. That's the first one in place. And I'm going to work steadily around and I'll probably speed this up because you don't really want to sit and watch me squeeze out 20 tubes of paint. But the next one I'm putting in is umber like that. Let's put a nice squeeze of that in. Lately I've been feeling like somebody else. Heard you moving on with someone new. My friends keep telling me that it was for the best. But I don't know if I will make it through. Cause every morning I wish you were here with me. Watching the sun life build my room Falling asleep at night Thinking about you and me Why did you have to be so cruel? I guess I should have known it from the start But baby, I was so caught up in you Picking up the pieces of Okay, so just very, very quickly, once you've squeezed all that paint out in your lovely new palette, then what you what do you do to when you finish painting? Well, the thing is that the first thing you do is this has got to dry. These are vulnerable as they are right now. If you tip this palette up, of course, all the colors are gonna to mix together and that will be a, a horrendous mess. What you should do if you are leaving it, if you can't close the palette like this, then simply give a covering over the top so that the air gets to it, it dries them out. And what you don't want is dust getting onto this either. So simply what I will do is I've got my colors there. I shall do that, keeps the dust off, keeps the dirt away, and they will dry up over a couple of days. 
so therefore you can then do what you like with your palette moving it around tipping it and whatever in the future but while these are still wet and in place keep them nice and flat and keep them covered okay let's carry on okay so what we're going to do now is i've got this lovely piece of paper and i've Put a fairly crude uh, grid on it you can take an awful lot more care and put a much nicer grid on i'm sure but i really wanted to do the same amount of slots as i've got in my new palette and i wanted to put the same order of color as they appear on the palette and put the names down the side and then i've got solid color at the top and i can put a wash down each one so you can see how it fades out to almost no color at all i'm going to do this and it will be great if you follow along and you want to do this yourselves. If you're not even, you know, if you're not using your new palette or you're not creating a new palette and you've got an existing one and haven't done this, it really is worth taking the trouble to do this because it's a great idea to have and know what colors you've got. All right, so for the first part then, I'm going to take the first color as it appears and it is my sepia. So I'm just going to put that solid color of sepia at the top. You can see how dark that color is, can't you? There. And as I put that on, I'm going to put a damp brush to that and let that just come down and let it wash down almost to nothing there and let that do what it wants to do. You've got a lovely color. You can see how deep it can be. If you think you haven't got it quite dark enough up there, let's just put a bit more color in there and let it come and grade itself down, down the wash. There we are. You get the idea and it gives you a splendid start to your little grid. I'm gonna work my way through each and every color now. We're gonna picking up the pieces of my heart. Oh baby, let me hold you. I just wanna hold you. Girl, I know we said some things we didn't mean, but thought that we could figure this one. Every morning I wish you were here with me Watching the sun light fill my room Falling asleep at night Thinking about you and me Why did you have to be so cruel? I guess I should have known it from the start But baby, I was so caught up in you of the pieces of my heart oh baby let me hold you i just want to hold you i guess i should have known it from the start but baby i was so caught up in you okay so we're sorted we're done and i have made everything on here on this uh piece of paper match whatever's on here and I've additionally, I've put a lovely wash out so that you can see how water affects the amount of color pigment once it's dry. You can see how it washes out to almost nothing in most cases. Now, the thing is that you may not be uh, planning on changing your particular palette at all, like I've just done here. But even if you're not going to do that, then it's still worth doing a little swatch like this and just seeing how your particular colors work in the same way that these work and if you are thinking of creating a new palette or you're just starting to buy watercolors uh, it is worth considering some of these colors now i'm not saying that this is the only color choices you can make i've shown you how many colors that i've got i've just edited mine down to 20 colors and even that by some people's standards could be way way too much and invariably i probably won't use half of them even so but um, they are there if I wish to use them. And if you are just starting out and you're planning on buying colors for the future, then maybe buy yourself a uh, palette that will hold say 20 and then buy in the colors that you can afford to buy and build up to the 20 that you want. You don't have to have these ones. This is purely mine. So anyway, 
I do hope that you've got something from this little exercise and you can take this idea on and you can start mixing some of these together in more grids if you wanted to and you can see how then the relationship between one color and another color behaves and i'm going to edit down as i said earlier my uh, plein air box to match them and although there are 20 colors on here and only properly 16 slots in my other one i might leave a couple of those extra pans in there just to make it balance out and be correct but Never mind that. Um, what's most important is that that's how I've set this one out. That's how I boiled down my color choices by comparing, contrasting different colors and saying, do I really need this one when I've got this one? Can I mix this one with this one? I do hope you've enjoyed this. I do hope it's been a value to you. And as I said earlier, put your thoughts into the comments by all means. And by all means also, if you want more than this video can offer you in terms of content, then please pop on over to my Patreon. All the details in the information under this and every other video out there that I do. But on my Patreon, there is so much more on offer. Tons of uh, real-time videos, both in oils and in watercolors. Uh, every Friday, there is a live stream just for my Patreons. We change the media and we change the subject matter each week. And on top of that, there is a wonderful growing community on Facebook of just my patrons in a, in a community page where we put upload paintings, we share thoughts, and it's a great growing family of people. So if you want to get involved with my Patreon, please nip on over, hit the um, link at the bottom and have a look at it. And it doesn't cost you very much and you'll be so, so welcome. Anyway, enough of that. I'm going to wrap it on and put you all to sleep. So enjoy this. Have a go at it. And if you are planning on putting a new palette together, it's worth considering, even if you're not using the same colors, but using the same way of creating it because it is a good workflow and it does help you work it in the future. So yeah, with that all said and done, I'm going to say goodbye. <laughs> it's been fun. Enjoy it. Catch you all next week, next Friday at three o'clock. Take care, everybody. Stay, stay safe. Happy painting. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. Every morning I wish you were here with me Watching the sun life fill my room Falling asleep at night Thinking about you and me Why did you have to be so cruel? I guess I should have known it from the start But baby, I was so